the real significance of this is this is the first time that an H6 strain influenza virus has been documented to infect a human. And importantly, while we've known that H6 influenza viruses circulate widely among birds, this is the first time that it happened in a human and there's a mutation in the virus that allowed it to infect a human. It may have infected other humans, but we have documentation of this first one. Importantly, it made the woman that got infected sick. And the concern is, once it can make you sick and you cough and sneeze and those sorts of things, that increases the probability of it being transmitted. Six people around her that were close to her had influenza-like illnesses, but by the time they could be tested, it was probably too late to detect the virus and they couldn't detect it. But this raises the alarm once again of a novel strain of influenza virus that's capable of causing human illness, that has a genetic mutation that allows it to get into human cells. Could a virus like this become pandemic? And that's what everybody's watching. Like all uh, uh, influenza respiratory viruses, they are primarily uh, transmitted by aerosol. So when we cough, when we sneeze, that's the primary way. You inhale those in and then get infected. There is another way, and that's what we call fomites, or just physical inanimate objects. So you cough or sneeze into your hand, and then I shake your hand, and then you put your hands in your mouth or nose and get infected, or touch the doorknob that I just touched. Um, that certainly is a known method of transmission, but it's really the respiratory transmission that accounts for the large-scale outbreaks. In the past, there wasn't a lot of work done in looking for these viruses in birds because it didn't make birds sick. It does make humans sick. And there's more and more interaction, more and more surveillance, and a lot more global travel that allows the spread of these viruses, including trade in these birds, migratory patterns of these birds. So, it really is uh, kind of one village when it comes to these diseases. One uh, positive note is that uh, for these novel viruses, uh, the antivirals that we have seem to be effective, and that's a good thing. But it does point out the need for ongoing and relentless surveillance uh, looking for these novel viruses. These viruses trade genetic material all the time and some of them are what we call fit. That is fit enough to continue to infect birds. Humans come into contact with those birds, get the disease, and then the big question is, are we going to transmit it one from another? If we do, with a viral strain like this where nobody has pre-existing antibody, that's a potentially disastrous situation. So a lot of us are watching real closely on this one.